So I simplified this project quite a bit. Uh, there used to be quite a lot of work to get your app off the phone, and I realized we don't really need to do that anymore. So, um, and for this one, I don't even really need Linux at all. I can just use the native Mac for almost everything. So 401 is where we're going to do this very powerful technique, which is the one I've used for years, which is very nice, where you modify the code and recompile the app, which is bloody awesome. And of course, you can do almost everything this way, but it can get sort of difficult to hunt through all that smally code to find the good stuff. So we're going to attack the progressive app, an old version of the one I did. I don't imagine the new version is any less vulnerable, but I just wrote up these instructions a few years ago, and I haven't bothered to update them for a new version. So, um, all right, I notified them, but they don't care. So here's the setup. I assume you have Windows or Mac host. You have the Android emulator here, probably coming from Android Studio, and you have a Debian guest that you can use. This is the standard setup here. And... Um, I assumed you're using a Debian here, but I think I'm going to just use the native Mac. I think it'll work. We'll see if I have to use um, Debian. So here, I, you have to get APK tool on your Linux machine. And this will put it on Debian, but you can put it on Mac with Brew. So after you have Homebrew, let me get out of here and clear. All right, after you have homebrew, which you can just put on with some commands, then you can just do brew install apk tool, which is pretty nice. Now, one thing about this is you're probably not getting the latest version. It's loading for repositories, but for this project, we're doing uh, hacking an app that is several uh, years old anyway, so the non-latest version is probably good enough. All right, so after you have apk tool, then you need to get the app. This is the app, the Progressive app. I put it on my website, an old version of the app, which they haven't busted me for yet, so that's nice. So um, let's uh, see what I got here. I'm going to make a directory, Progressive. And move in there to keep my stuff organized. All right, now I'm going to get the app. Okay, this I, you do not need to suck the app off a phone, which is the way I originally wrote this project. You can just download it from my website and play with it. So now that we've got it, we want to take it apart with APK tool and it's disassemble the app. Now I might have to use some switches here, uh, minus F, minus R. This does something like not take apart the images, because if it does that, it's hard to put them back in. I forget what minus R do. I just learned this, this combination of switches is more likely to work. Um, the problem is apps keep adding new features, and APK tool doesn't have the ability to unpack all the new things correctly and put them back correctly. So this tells it not to bother unpacking the resources, just leave them alone. So when we modify the app, we can put it back in. All we really want to do is get the Smalley code out, modify it, and then pack it back up. So minus F minus R seems to be the best switches to use here in my experience. And uh, base.apk. There. So that unpacks it. At one time, every app had its own name called APK, and lately everybody's naming everything based on APK, which is kind of rude. That's why I have to make a directory called Progressive to know what I've got. So when you take it apart, now you have a folder called Base. And if you look in that folder, here's your good stuff. There's the Android manifest that's going to have all the intents and permissions and stuff. And in, here's the Smalley. This folder called Smalley and these Smalley classes contain all the Smalley code, which is the executable code of the app. And now um, you could, by the way, I probably ought to just demonstrate this. Let's see if I can put JADX. I didn't put it in this project. It's coming in a later project. But let's get JADX. If you want to see the actual Java code, you want to download this tool. There are other tools that can do it, but JADX is pretty awesome. What I don't know is if it's going to run on this M1. That's why I think it'll be interesting to see. I think it will. <coughs> it's a zip file. Well, that's something. It's going in 128. I guess that'll do. Let's, uh, four minutes. What? Well, must be limited at their end. The network here is really fast. Two minutes. What's that? Yeah, it's going. I might come back to it. All right. Anyway, JADX will let you actually disassemble the app and back to JavaScript, back to Java, and see it go. And you'll see the structure. So this is the kind of tree structured directory you'd see, and you see the code in there. And we'll use it in later projects. Anyway, um, so there's a lot of folders and a lot of files. So it might seem difficult to hunt in there and find things, but that's what grep does. Grep R minus R will do a recursive search through the 
current folder, whatever folder you put here, but dot is the current folder, and all the subfolders looking for something. So if I want to find out how it handles the password when you log into Progressive, in principle, it could be difficult to find, but in practice, people usually name that variable password or something like password. So I'm going to search for occurrences of the word password, and the I means insensitive, so with any combination of uppercase and lowercase. And a file manager? Uh, yeah, it's got the same thing as. Um, um, yes, you're right. As a matter of fact, I forgot. I'm not in a virtual machine. You're right. I could just do this. You're right. Good point. I could just use the same old finder. Absolutely. In this case, I'm making it, I'm making this more difficult than it needs to be now that you mention it. Uh, if I go to Documents, and here, I'm going to 128, and I can just go in here and see the progressive. Absolutely. Good point. You can see all this stuff here. So there's Smalley, Android, and Com. Com is the really usually. These other folders are like from Google, Android files and stuff. The com is going to be from the company. And here's various company, Amazon, and someplace down here is going to be the part Progressive wrote, get, keep, safe. These are libraries they've added. And if you decompile Android apps, you'll see the same things over and over. Everybody uses certain standard libraries, like Bump Tech. There's something called Bouncy Castle everybody uses for encryption. They got brain... Uh, it's not a cron job. It's just a library you include, like an include file. But, but developers get their favorite ones, and app developers just make all the apps the same. You know, they have just sort of write through, make founder modifications, make a whole family of apps. And typically, the whole family has the same security vulnerabilities, because they're all pretty much just copies of each other. Yeah, but you're right. You can see it there. So here we are. Here's where the, the word password was used. And you see there is um, something called password editor action, password editor, password hint and password editor, and so on. So there's something in my instructions. I really wrote only a few lines using password. And the one, uh, to make it easier to see, you can put a less minus s, and that will stop the lines wrapping. Or so I imagine. Then again, maybe it's not going to work at all. Oh, there it does. It goes. All right. And now you can see which files it's in. And you can see there's only a couple of files that use the word password. Login request, login view model, and login binding. Those are the only files that actually use the word password. So, Q should get me out of here. And so it turns out that the goodies are in this one, login view model. So all you got to do is edit that with any editor. And if you're crazy and old-fashioned like me, you'd use Nano. Other people use cool things, but... I couldn't care about that fancy stuff. Nano will do. And uh, new file. That's not right. I must have made a mistake. Control X. Let's see. What, oh, I'm in base. PWD. And this is going to do dot base. Right. It's good from above this. All right. So I gotta, if I'm going to do this way, i got to get rid of the base. I did it before from the directory above this, which is fine. What have I expected? VI. Now, I never can remember how to use VI. Now, if you, this is getting over any feeling of respect for me, yes. Sometimes people think I know stuff. You have to get over that. I don't know much of anything. I only know how to do the simple. I do pretty much everything the way I did in like 74 and Fortran, man. I, anyway, uh, so now I'm going to look for login online account. So I do control W to search in nano and put in this stuff and find it. And so there's one of them. Control login on. I'm going to find the second one. Control W. Find the second one. Okay. Now I'm in a me private method for login online account, um, which is here. Now, the way these things work, you have, um, Debian has a tree command. Yeah, that's right. You can, you can also do that, view it as a tree. Good. These are good tips. Okay, so when you look at this, it has locals 5. There are 16 registers available in the Android virtual, virtual machine. You can use as many as you define here. Now, I'm going to log the password, so I'm going to need another variable. So I'm going to change log is locals 5 to locals 6 so I don't stomp anything. If you make a mistake and reuse a register that's already been used, the app will probably crash because you're modifying the code. But I'm going to give it another local, so now I'm going to have a variable to use all by myself. So now I'm going to put in my Trojan, and this is one of my few Trojans I know. This is the Trojan that puts something in the log. And so it's going to put this in V5, 
the new variable, I put local six, so that's zero through five. So now I have this new one that's never used. So that's where I'm putting my label, Trojan Stealing Progressive Credentials. And now I'm gonna print out V2. And I'm gonna do this below the line 434 mark. So let's look at the app and go down and find, now it tells you the line numbers in the original Java code, which is pretty handy. So four, there's line 434. And um, I put this below the line 434 mark. Right, this is the code that gets the username. Here's the username. It's gonna load the username into V2. And so it's gonna uh, get the object, get the value of the object, and put it in V2. So after it does that move result object, V2 now contains the user a name. And I think, so I'm gonna put this after check cast, okay. Uh, V2, then comes V3 is the password. And right, that's what's going to go here. I'll go to after the second check cast. But it's done at this point. V2 contains the username and V3 contains the password. So when I do this, it's now going to put the username here and the password there in two lines in the log with this label. That's it. That's the added code. And you don't have to have the indentation, right? Smalley doesn't care about indentation. It's not like Python. So that's it. Now all I have to do is rebuild the app. So I'll go back to my um, directory above this, where I work from. Now everything is in that base directory. The, the base directory there has everything, including my modified codes. I use APK tool D to take it apart, and I use APK tool B to rebuild it. There. And it has a, quite a job to do. And like I say, you. Uh, if your APK tool gets older than about six months, it'll only work about about half the latest apps. They keep adding new features to the app, and they keep adding new features to APK tool, but it doesn't keep up. But this one's working, and see, it's copying the raw resources. Because of the minus R flag, it did not take apart the resources and have to rebuild them, because that's often the source of trouble. And I didn't really care about that. So it's building the app back, and uh, there. It's done building the app, and so what it's done, by the way, is it's now created a folder. If I go base, it's made a folder called dist, and in there is the new APK. This is the modified APK with the modified code in it. Now, I could try to drag that and drop it on my emulator. Let me get my emulator up here. Um, here's my emulator. Okay. So I could just drag and drop it to try to install it, and that would be here, base, dist. There's my APK. So when I try that, come on, there we go, and drop it. It's going to fail to install because you're not allowed to install anything that's unsigned. Even though the certificate is self-signed, it means almost nothing, you have to have a certificate. It, won't, it will not even install anything that's not signed. So I've got to make a signature. And that is just a routine activity with key tool. And I should have key tool. I think it comes at the other Android tools. Let's see if I have key tool on this uh, M1. Key tool. I do have key tool. Good. So I'm going to run this command. This will create a certificate, uh, an RSA certificate of the right size with the validity of 10,000 days, whatever that is, four years or something. That's fine. And it's supposed to have an alias, so there's a word involved. And I just use alias name because I just can't be bothered to think about anything other than the default. Now you give it a password, like password, because I don't care. Okay. Now I've got to fill in first and last name for the certificate, and it's okay to leave everything blank, but when you're doing this, you have to say yes to the last question, or you'll have to do it again. All right, so now I've signed it with a self-signed certificate, and now I need to give it the password, um, and password. Excuse me, now what I've done is create the certificate. I haven't yet signed it. For that, I need to use jar signer, and that's here, jar signer. And this is the part you might have to adjust, base, dist, base.apk. That's where the new thing I'm signing is. That's the only part of this you probably have to change when you're signing different apps. And you don't even have to change that so much these days now that everybody names their thing base. Maybe that's why they do it. Uh, the operation couldn't be completed. Unable to, okay, the Java runtime, okay. Um, I need to install JDK, I think. Um, let's do that.
Nice. Yep, JRE, okay. Um, let's get the official website and install JRE. Probably have JRE on this. Well, I don't have JRE on my, on my um, Now, you get it just from java.com, maybe there's a better way to do it. Let's see, install JRE. Java Runtime Environment. Thought I would need a development kit there. Installing the Java Runtime Environment. Oracle, that's the place. Java Downloads, even better, okay. Uh, I wonder if they have one for the M1. Hmm. Uh-oh, install JRE on the M1 Mac. Hmm, it occurs to me. Installation of the JDK on the Mac OS. For the new silicon chips, okay, apparently it exists. Um, homebrew. Oh, oh well, now I'm liking this. Brew install open JDK. Now that's awesome. Let's try that. <laughs> Oops, I gotta spell it right. There. Well, that's it's already installed, but outdated. Well. That's disturbing. Then why couldn't jar shiny run? Well, I may have trouble shining my app. Um, I would think you would need, is it, this is JDK, right? Java Development Kit, I think what we need. They said we need a JRE, but I think what we need is JDK. Java Development Kit for Jar Signer, that's developing apps, just logically. Oh no, Java, yes, Java is always painful. But the network, the Mac is fast and the network here is fast, so this should be a minimum pain. But I don't know how much of this stuff has really been compiled for the M1. <laughs> but now we're up to the M2, so it's been around for a couple of years, maybe they've developed everything. Hey. Open JDK 17 is faster than 8. Well, okay, I don't know what I'm getting here. Anyway, we'll see uh, if I can uh, run Jar Shiner after this. I may have to uh, skip this and come back after spending time debugging it. Java can easily take, you know, a day and a half to figure out what's wrong with it. Lord knows Frida did. All right. Yeah, I remember all these dependencies went by before. It might be a while doing that. You know, let's take a look at JADX. Let's see if that ever came down. It did, all right. That was another thing I wanted to show you. So let's, while that is taking forever, let's go to this that was taking forever, which is JADX. All right, so here's JADX. I just unzip it. And as a matter of fact, it also needs Java. So hopefully I've got, uh, there it is, JADX 1.4 in bin is here, and so there's JADX GUI, so I should be able to run it right in there from a command line. So let me open, oh, it's done. All right, um, well, let's just see if I can do that jar signer thing yet. There, the operation couldn't be completed, unable to locate a Java runtime. Um, do you have to write a jar in front of it? I feel like I've seen that before, you write jar and then the command. Java jar? Jar, Jar Shiner? I think so. I think we It's not just Jar and enter. Yeah, it's usually Java Jar. I got a quote problem. Jar. No, I, I, I actually think I need a Java runtime environment. So what, let's see. Uh, let's install JRE. Um, JRE for the Mac M1. Probably I can do that too. Um, with brew. Oh, uh, well, all right, that's only from a month or two ago. And uh, yeah, install OpenJDK. What the hell? Verify if Java is installed. What about JRE though? Does the JDK include the JRE? I don't think it does actually. The JDK has a runtime environment. Yeah, that's what somebody said. Well, then it's probably just a matter of the path or something. All right. Well, I'm not going to struggle with that one anymore. Um, let me uh, 
just talk about what will happen if you don't have the M1. Or if you, so if you use Debian, where it would work, and I could be using my Debian machine to do this, um, then you sign this thing, then you can just run the modified app on your, um, on your, uh, hmm, my, on your phone, and uh, then you just run the app, and the password will just appear in the log when you do um, ADB logcat. So it's, uh, we brought to call you close to the end, but I couldn't quite get there. Reopen the terminal, it would get the path. That's an interesting idea, let me try that. That's an interesting idea, let me try this. Maybe I can get it, let's get the joint. There's the command I want to execute. Okay, let's make a new terminal. I guess I'll just close all the old ones. I'm not sure you need to, but let's do that. And then make a new one. And CD128 and CD Progressive. Okay, and there's, um, nope. Unable to locate Java runtime. This is always the same thing with Java. I got to find a bunch of like path and like, Java home and stuff like that, and find out where it is. They, uh, you always have to like Google and spend time finding out why it doesn't work. Anyway, that's how this one's going to go. That's as far as I'm going to go to demonstrate it for today. And let's get on to other things which I think will work better. Um, so I'll stop.